This question from FA2 Syllabus Area E looks at Alex. It tells us that their accounting system shows a balance outstanding to a supplier called Brenda of $21,060 as at the 31st of July 20x4. However, what they've also received is the statement of account from the supplier showing the balance outstanding to Brenda showing as 20020 as at the same date. So from Alex's perspective, which two of the following statements could explain that difference? We have a difference between what our ledger is showing and what the actual supplier's ledger is showing. When we have a difference between what the supplier is saying and what your current ledger is saying, then it's usually down to either an error or a timing difference. Looking at each of these choices one at a time, we can decide whether the explanation will determine the difference between these two. Firstly, it tells us in choice one that Alex had made a payment to Brenda before the year end, which had not been reflected on the statement of account. If the payment has been made to Brenda, then that would have been adjusted in the current ledger for Alex, which means it would have reduced the balance. Here we can see that our ledger balance is actually higher than what the supplier is saying is owed. And so therefore that can't possibly explain the difference. In our next choice, it tells us that Brenda had given Alex a credit note for goods returned, which had been omitted from Brenda's supplier account in Alex's accounting system. So if they had issued a credit note, but Alex hadn't yet adjusted it, then that would mean that this ledger balance would need to be reduced. The ledger balance goes down, then that could mean that it explains the difference between why the supplier account is showing less than what the ledger account is showing. So there is a good chance that this issue could explain the difference. On the third choice, it tells us that Alex has recorded a payment to a different supplier and allocated it incorrectly to Brenda's account in Alex's accounting system. So if Alex has recorded an amount that was paid to a different supplier but put it into Brenda's account, then that would have reduced the balance according to the ledger. We can see that our ledger account is showing a higher balance than what the supplier is saying. So the opposite effect has happened. And what we also know is that then when they adjust this, so when they remove that payment and put it into the correct supplier, then the account for Brenda is going to go up in value. So this is going to make the difference between the ledger and the supplier statement even bigger. So this can't possibly be one of the explanations. So checking our final choice, it tells us that Alex has recorded a purchase invoice from Brenda in Brenda's supplier account in Alex's accounting system, but they've done it twice. So if we've got two invoices recorded in the ledger by accident, if we remove one of those, it will bring down the ledger balance. And so this could remove that balance and bring it down to what the supplier is saying. So in answering this question from Alex's accounting perspective, which two of the following statements could explain the difference? We would be looking at option two, the fact that Brenda had given Alex a credit note for goods returned, which had been left out of Brenda's supplier account in their system. And then also Alex recording that purchase invoice twice in error, which would then need to be adjusted to reduce the overall balance. Our next question relating to syllabus area E looks at the following issues that have been identified when Freya reconciled their trade payables general ledger and the account balance with the sum of all individual supplier statement balances. So we're looking at a supplier control account reconciliation. It gives us three issues. The first one is that credit notes incorrectly issued by a supplier totaling $2,500 are included in the supplier statements, but have been omitted from Freya's accounting system. The second issue is that suppliers invoices totaling $5,750 have been omitted from Freya's accounting system. And then the third one is that we've got more supplier invoices, this time totaling $1,200, but they have been input twice in error to Freya's accounting system. They then let us know that all purchases and purchase returns are recognised in the same general ledger. And the question is, which of the following manual journal entries will correct Freya's ledger accounts for the cumulative errors above? We are looking at cumulative errors, so we need to look at each of the three issues and decide how we should be adjusting for them. 
Looking at the first issue, the fact that credit notes were incorrectly issued by a supplier, totaling $2,500, and they're included in the supplier statements, but omitted from Freya's accounting system, means that we have no error here. Because thankfully, in the accounting system of Freya's that we're reviewing, those credit notes which were incorrectly issued haven't been included, in which case we don't need to adjust for them. The next one, point two, telling us that suppliers' invoices totaling 5,750 have been omitted from Freya's accounting system means that they need to be now included. So in our ledger, we're going to see is that if we now include that 5,750, in the ledger, it's going to increase the balance. Then in the third issue, it tells us that supplier invoices totaling $1,200 have been input twice in error to the accounting system. So if they've been input twice, we need to remove one of those transactions. So therefore, if we now take off $1,200, that will then give us the overall adjustment to the accounting system. So the 5,750 minus the $1,200 is going to give us 4,550. This net effect relating to supply invoices is going to increase purchases within the accounting system. And also, as it's credit purchases, it's also going to increase trade payables. So therefore, if we've got an increase in purchases, we're going to need to debit. And if we've got an increase in terms of trade payables, which is a liability, then we would need to credit, which means the correct answer, as we can see from the journal options we have, is the first choice. We will debit purchases with 4,550 and then credit trade payables with the same amount. Our next question relates to bank reconciliations. Question three tells us that the bank account in Danny's general ledger has a credit balance of $538. This is a credit balance, so therefore this must show as an overdraft on that bank account. The difference between this balance and the balance on their bank statement is due to the following issues. So we then need to look at these issues and then decide what is the reconciled overdraft balance on the bank general ledger account and enter it as an absolute number. I'm going to start my reconciliation calculation with the balance that I know, which is the balance on the general ledger, which is the $538 overdrawn. So I'm going to show it in brackets. The first difference tells me that the bank charged interest of $92 on his overdraft. They won't have been included on the ledger. Therefore, we're going to have to adjust for them. If we're looking at bank interest, it's an expense. So we're going to end up debiting the expense account and we would credit bank because the charge would reduce our overall bank account. Therefore, I'm going to adjust against my overdraft the interest amount coming off of the balance. So again, in brackets, I'm going to show $92. The next difference is that Danny incorrectly recorded the value of a check paid to a supplier for $642 as $462. So the difference of $180 needs to be adjusted in the ledger. We can see in the ledger that the amount that was recorded was $462, which was lower than what it should have been. Paying a check out of the bank account would have reduced the overall bank balance. And so therefore, if we're going to need to adjust for it as $642, then that difference is going to be a further cost in the bank balance. And so therefore, it's once again going to reduce the bank account balance. And so adjusting this on my working, I'm then going to look at the check adjustment. And if we're reducing our bank again by 180 then once again, I'm going to take that off the overall balance. So the trick with this question was recognizing at the beginning that that credit balance was an overdraft balance. So starting off with a minus 538 and then being very careful with the adjustments that we have and then working out whether we need to reduce our bank account or increase our bank account. Looking at the third option, it tells us that a lodgement of $382 has still to be credited by the bank. So that's been recorded, that's in our ledger, 
but the bank haven't yet recorded it. And therefore, that has no effect on the adjustments in relation to our ledger because we've already recorded it. So therefore, for the third option, I'm not going to need to include any adjustment. So to wrap this up, we need to work out what the reconciled overdraft balance on the bank general ledger account is by taking the minus 538, reducing it further by 92, and then by 180, which means we have got $810 as our overdraft balance.